Okay, so let's go jump down to A104. Uh, These here, uh, see here's a lift, lift shaft section, okay? Now, this is important too because uh, you can see here that this section detail with the with these two beams. So these two beams, uh, you do, almost generally you're like, okay, this stuff is sometimes gets uh, framed out and uh, fire rate. They're gonna have to fire spray this thing at the end. But yeah, see new steel beam, existing structure. So they doubled up all these beams and columns and stuff. That's what um, that's that's what's so weird. Uh, weird about this reno but i'm looking at oh i don't see nothing on drywall no drywall in those two beams at the front of that so that's perfect this is the back wall here and i also noticed they deleted the plywood but see here right away i look i'm like wait a minute there's another layer there because my boss was telling me to frame the the first floor this is the first floor here below this i beam he was telling me to frame the, it back five eights because there's double layer on the bottom but not at the top yeah, this P2, like, and this is a mistake. There's a conflict here, unless they changed it. But there, it looks like there's a conflict. Let me see here. Yeah, so P1. See this here? It's a P1 wall. On the on the second floor, it's only it's a P1. So that's, o that's only one layer. And this is a P3. It's only one layer, man. P1, one layer, five eighths, both sides. So here's a, pro here's a conflict right here, okay? So it's labeled as a P1 here with only one layer, but it's showing as a P2 here on the second floor. Because this, this here is the second floor. See, to under second floor here, that is worth clarification almost, okay? And then it's it's also showing you double layer on both sides on the second floor. But anyways, this is a, this is plywood, okay? So at first he was telling me to to put the bot like frame the first floor in five eight so that the that the second layer would just go straight up. And I'm like, well, I can't because the original drawing showed it cut off here, the second layer, and um, and um, the plywood running straight, and then another layer, and then only one layer on the second floor. This is actually only a P1 wall anyways, uh, which is one layer. You don't need two layer up here because it, it's not separating the units, okay? Only only walls that are dividing one unit to another needs to ha needs to be two hours. But yeah, so you can see, like, it's just, it's just really weird. See, this is that wall, right? It's showing a P2 wall again here, right? But uh, over here in the floor plan, it's just a P1. When I was estimating I'm such a good estimator. I never miss anything. So um, we we weren't winning a lot because my estimates were too good. Like they're, they, it's so weird. Like general contractors are shady, man. This proves it because they only, they always award to the lowest price basically. And when you're two hundred thousand dollars lesser than than the like the other, like the next bid or whatever, you've obviously obviously missed something, and and they know that, and they 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 just get you. Right? Oh, you sure you got everything? You sure you got? Yeah, I got everything. Okay. Yeah, right. It's just it's a it's a crazy business. So you don't want to miss. Okay. And the, how I won jobs is not for my low numbers. It was my involvement in the estimating in the estimate process, talking to the designers and the general contractors, and making sure that we had everything included. Okay, and that we had all the systems designed ahead of time. And you know, it, it's just not always the most strategic way to win jobs, but it's it's like, who did they call after the other guys screwed up, right? <laughs> They're gonna call you. And then, then, they, then they learned that they should have called you first, right? The lowest price sunk the Titanic, yeah, right? One of my old um, like senior estimators, like one of his, his, or his strategy was to take the highest number and the lowest number and throw those bids right out. And only and, and look at the middle ones. Okay, you take the highest bidder and the lowest bidder and throw them right out. Wouldn't even look at them. There's a conflict right there. Like it's just you're always gonna find them, and it's up to you to know that of the fire rating here. It even shows you it only needs one layer because it's got one dot. It's in this one here. It's got two two dots because that's separating a unit, a unit the units. So you know should know as as a journeyman or journey person, whatever you want to say, that the one hour on the second floor only needs one one layer of drywall and it's not not like this they just got lazy in here and just just kept it p2 all the way up right and they drew it here um uh, as well uh, but it's only p2 on the main floor because this is one unit and then the, uh, and this is the uh, like e either side of this is a different unit but all up here is a part of this one so it doesn't need that uh two hour rating and we never framed this part inside of this elevator shaft because this is a possible future elevator shaft and how do we how do they know that like two years from now that that the size of that elevator is going to be that the same or whatnot right like um you're you gotta you definitely don't want to do that so we just frame straight across here uh we and i cut the bottom track 
uh, here for the opening so that we can take it out or that someone can take it out later, right? Align face of wall with edge of floor. So what that means is exactly like if you go back to my layout, laying out video, and when I laid this wall out, I laid these walls out on site. Okay, you go back to that video. Um, I came in uh, five eighths from the concrete and because that's the end, end of the wall is your drywall. So that's how, that's where you find out where to put it. And if this happens a lot, okay, align face of wall uh, with edge of floor. Okay, no problem, right? So you want to bring your steel in five eighths so that the drywall lands flush to the concrete. And it might be might be kind of funny because now all of a sudden you've got concrete, Q deck, and a beam or a joist, right? And it's all exposed, but that's where it tells you. Could you imagine? And there, can you imagine trying to have to hang the drywall like suspended in the air though without that little five eighths lip too? Like, come on, that'd be crazy, right? But yeah, look at all your little details. The like, you never know whether be a, where there will be a, um, a, a like a direction that you need. Okay, so if if the project doesn't come with a specifications book, okay, like sometimes the the specifications come in books okay and some projects have volumes of specifications and it's crazy um you got to make sure you read everything real everything related to your trade because it's going to tell you it's going to give you details on fasteners it's going to give you details on um, spacing and and it's also going to give you details so um sometimes there's little fire rating requirements okay where there's columns inside of walls and a lot of times we just frame them over but they actually need to be um, enclosed in drywall too right and then traveled over top there's sometimes you gotta you gotta fire rate that you gotta really pay attention to the fire rating okay not a big set of drawings but there wasn't a lot of work there but you can see like just so something so simple it's still you gotta know how to uh, put it all together right so if you're if you're like yeah like low like the low bidder is like yeah they're always they always run into problems and stuff like there's always issues with that I don't understand why contractors do that 